we need to focus on those cities and regions where we have that, that, that great disconnect between uh, life as a uh, healthy place and life in disaster. So direct funding uh, is of the block grant type that I've suggested I think is critical. Uh, to go through the state, that filtering system leaves a lot of money uh, on the table in Sacramento. And uh, there is, and you've served up there, many of you on this, uh, in Congress, you know this, I used the word Byzantine before, and that's true. To get money out of Sacramento in ways that make sense uh, sometimes is very, very challenging. So block grant funding of the CDBG type is just deeply appreciated, and we can put it to work. And we are creative uh, frontline leaders. Uh, and we're innovators uh, at the city level and the county level. We know what the problems are uh, and how to resolve those issues. So you, know, you need to understand uh, that direct funding mechanism. You put it to effect in the energy uh, program you articulated for us. Uh, that's very, very helpful to us. Uh, and as I told you before in my testimony, using those dollars uh, in a way that combines them, in our case, with AB 811, uh, Structures, we're going to stimulate a whole new green economy, uh, largely attributable to your creativity of a direct grant program, a block type uh, program. There are some areas in which the, in the existing formulas and the money went through the state, I think, work fairly well. In transportation, for example, because we got some of the earliest money through the transportation uh, distribution through the state to the metropolitan planning organizations onto the, the, the regions. But there is a delay any time that has to go to the state to go through that process before it actually gets into uh, circulation. And direct funding for the city's uh, block grant program is probably the, the fastest way to get the money into circulation. We have another problem with direct funding for the states, at least in transportation, because our Metropolitan Transportation Commission in Northern California, which San Jose participates, is not representative on a uh, population basis. It is not one person on one vote. Uh, San Jose being the largest city in the region, the third largest in the state, uh, Santa Clara County, they're both underrepresented, so the representation tends to be uh, a little more rural, a little more, uh, as uh, Mayor Villarosa so eloquently put it, uh, building things from ducks to geese is a possibility when the money goes through the states. And I know that many other states and other big cities, so it's a bigger problem even than California. Uh, I'm going to yield some time uh, to Assemblywoman Richardson because she raised a key question about education and I'd like to respond. But uh, there are two procedures in the formula and I want you to respond to them. Maintenance of, eff maintenance of effort and a local match or statewide match. And most often, uh, states are really suffering under maintaining the effort at the same level and matching the funds that come in. So, can you comment on those two procedures? Maintenance of effort has not been a big issue for the city because most of our funding that's come in has been for specified projects and specified things, and we're spending it in accordance to, to the guidelines. That was one of our uh, concerns last year when Mayor Villaraigosa and I were in Washington and talking to Congress about. How do we ensure that the states maintain their efforts? Because the states have a, a fairly poor record uh, when it comes to, to, to that. So that's been an issue for us. And I can't comment directly on what the, the state has done, but I think they're going to have some experts here uh, speaking pretty, uh, pretty shortly. Uh, and I'll raise the question. But the local match is always a, a problem, given the kind of budget problems that local governments are having in California, and in particular, San Jose will have a budget gap next year greater than 10% of the general fund. So every general fund dollar is uh, very precious and we will undoubtedly have some cases where we just can't afford to do the match even though you're going to give us three quarters of the money. Uh, gentlemen, the time has expired and uh, gentlemen, the gentleman from uh, 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 he's a bit similar to have our own time, but it's a matter of time. Uh, <laughs> 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 so we're not calling that. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to ask a question about the flow of money and whether that's going smoothly. Uh, I know that cities have had to put up money up front for the other projects. Uh, and one uh, thing that 
that struck me is, is, is LA's struggle with this flow of money. Um, they were awarded uh, 600 million, but only received 16 million, and then had to spend 31 million, mostly by taking out loans and waiting to be reimbursed. Uh, so this places a very significant burden on localities to put the money up up front when it's difficult in these economic times to get credit, uh, not to mention the interest problem. So I'm wondering what the situation has been for your cities with regard to the flow of money and how are it's coming down? Quite frankly, Congressman, I am not uh, sure that we have uh, suffered the kind of disabilities that the mayor of LA has uh, offered to you uh, this afternoon. Uh, we have, uh, on our cop strength that I've discussed, uh, that money has flowed. Uh, and we're in the hiring process uh, as we speak. Uh, our dollars for the I-215, that's the major $125 million that uh, we uh, needed, uh, has come uh, uh, speedily uh, to the table. And we have kept the thousands employed uh, in highway construction as a result of that. So I can't, uh, I don't know enough about LA's problems in terms of cash flow, but uh, I've not heard from our uh, regional transportation group uh, or city manager that we've had difficulty in uh, receiving those dollars. We have been awarded roughly $70 million. We have spent approximately $16 million and have been reimbursed about $8 million. So we're spending it and getting reimbursed, and that's uh, something that we've been able to handle in, in part because uh, it's not all coming out of the general fund. We have some enterprise funds. It's, it's a little bit different. So I would say that we're not in trouble because of that. Cash flow will, will probably be an issue, especially in this next budget year as our cash reserves uh, continue to go down. And I had just one other fact that I, I was talking about the uh, transportation street resurfacing here. So we, we were awarded $15 million. We spent $173,000, been reimbursed $33,000, and created 26 jobs. So 26 jobs doesn't sound like a lot for $15 million. So we haven't spent $15 million. Uh, and uh, we're spending the money, we'll get reimbursed, we'll spend it and get reimbursed. So that'll help us in the cash flow on the street service. I wonder if you've had similar problems that uh, the mayor was talking about, where a job was given to city employees, but then they were told that they had to have jobs that were contracted out instead, and it forces the city to really fire 139 uh, workers who actually were doing jobs that that uh, were, were part of this, the art project anyway. By and large, most of our spending has been on contracts with private sector companies. And so we've not put a lot of city employees to work doing that. So it's not been a big problem for us. <coughs> we don't have the same problem in LA as the experience. Although we will be laying off city employees, there's no doubt about it. But that's a, not, not a result of anything other than the same as well. Yes, I yield back. Thank you very much. That's something new. We don't get to yes, the yield back. So I want you to know, uh, Can I take you, you caught me off the ground. Congresswoman Napolitano. Thank you, Chairman Tams. Uh, it's just a lot of questions. Uh, thank you for I wish, like you, that the area that was on that uh, um, stayed a little bit uh, longer because there were some issues that uh, were very salient. We, we were adjacent to him at that garden in Los Angeles. But Mayor Morris, um, San Bernardino um, is, is a, I wouldn't say my neighbor's city, but the Alameda Quarter East Coast all the way through in the Texas area. My biggest concern has been the funding to do the great separations. Uh, we're going to get some uh, funding. The deal has not been uh, processed yet. Uh, the administration feels it is some time. To me, that would be a great creator of jobs. But how do you get to work with well, I, I serve on the Metrolink board. Uh, and uh, you know of all accidents. Uh, and you know the danger. Uh, we regularly uh, have tragic uh, pedestrian uh, incidents uh, at grade crossings, at grade crossings. Uh, and uh, from that board table, it's clear of the need. Uh, our neighboring city, Riverside, I think in the city itself, has over 20 
at grade crossings uh, that really slow down the commerce uh, of that city more than any other city in the region. Uh, we desperately need those resources, and you're right. Uh, this is critical infrastructure to create a transit system that makes sense for both cargo as well as uh, passenger transit. Uh, you mentioned in your opening statement, Congresswoman, that uh, you were deeply concerned about the issue of, of, of transit funding. You know, I think it's critically important that we use this disaster as an opportunity to envision a new future for Southern California. Uh, Northern California has been much more visionary with the uh, advent uh, of, of transit systems that, uh, that move people. Uh, in alternative choices to the automobile. Southern California has remained auto-dependent uh, with a, a great but crumbling freeway system, uh, but we need to invest in infrastructure for transit. And this is an opportunity area for us, is to look at transit centers, at the rapid transit bus lines, at light rail systems, uh, and invest heavily in this future. Uh, it'll be upon us uh, and our children and grandchildren will inherit uh, what we have or have not done. And I'd love to see stimulus dollars invested more heavily in that kind of visionary infrastructure uh, that you've discussed. Well, we need to get, uh, uh, we, the, um, there's not much room for fraud in, in, uh, um, in the um, area of great separations because they use every penny to be able to do it. Since, since the railroads only apply uh, what is it, 3 to 5 percent of, of uh, matching funds. Uh, the state does not have the funding, and so it's mostly federal and local participation. And that's a sad state of affairs because you compromise uh, the safety of the individuals at great separations. Um, that, that, that said, um, I'm looking also at Title 16. Um, and, and if there are any project funds that, because there is such high unemployment, that those bids may have come under uh, the, the estimates. What is happening with that money, and is that money being held you know, accountable so that we can expand the projects, whether uh, additional job creation, whether it's uh, in, in Title 16 alone, that provides not only jobs, but provides clean but access to water that is now almost as, as clean as potable. So uh, it, it, those areas are a great concern because I do sit on them, and I'd certainly love to talk to you and read about your solar company because. That is an issue that that's where new job creation is going to be. But accountability of the funds that might be coming from the federal government to uh, assist in the development, not only the training, but the uh, um, new um, manufacturing companies coming and the assistance to be able to help them expand. Those are great issues. The funding that I've seen uh, that will come through the Department of Energy, you always seem to be doing it an excellent job at this time of working those issues. A year ago when I was in Washington, the stimulus bill was being put together, the Department of Energy had one high level appointee, that was Secretary Chu. And so the department is to write the regulations, issue the regulations, uh, implement the program while growing itself, getting the staff in place, the uh, congressionally approved appointees as well as all the senior staff. And they've been doing that while trying to manage the there, and I, I met with uh, Jonathan Silver, the executive director of the, of the Loan Guarantee Program this week, and they are much better uh, equipped to, uh, to deal with that. But the kind of detail and the work that they're doing with our private sector companies to make sure the money is spent correctly, and it is, I think it's very good. And okay. we have yet to see I'm the money. I'm running out of time, so I may okay. interrupt you just briefly to say, be sure that you work with SBA, Small Business. Uh, and Velasquez has been the champion for small business assistance to uh, ensure that these uh, small companies are able to get um, their caps lifted for loans. Yes, increasing their capital. Correct. Correct. Especially for capital. And that's so critical. If we're going to have new entrepreneurs be able to build that, but we also need to ensure that the money is going directly to what it was intended to and not misused. I quickly want to respond to your uh, comment about the T-bill reauthorization. We need it sooner than later. And we need to look at it again. Not the administration. I They're all ready. When I'm talking to you, you talk to the president. No, we don't. I don't. Uh, <laughs> we, need that. we need to look at the caps on small starts and new starts. 
those are the Type kinds of grants. Of, yes, those are the things that we need to rebuild an economy in the new uh, future. Couldn't agree with you more, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right. Thank you very much, Chair. And I yield to Congressman Richards. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, thank you for the two of you testifying. It always helps us to have realistic, pertinent information. Uh, let me ask you a couple of really direct questions when we have a limited period of time. Um, Mayor Morris, how many jobs did you say were created in your um, city and region based upon the stimulus funds? Well, we have uh, on the stimulus package we put together for the I-215, that's about 2,300 jobs. Uh, we have within our city, probably thus far, 200 jobs, um, but as Mayor Reed suggested, uh, we're still unfolding some of those resources. Uh, those numbers will increase over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Uh, you know, we're trying to be shovel ready in all particular, but that's a challenge, as Mayor Reed suggests. I understand. My next question is, of those jobs, how many were new and how many were you preserving? Uh, in the city, we were preserving jobs. Uh, and those are high-cost jobs. Fully funded police officer uh, or fire uh, personnel or other city employee. You know, it's, it's a pretty uh, heavy commitment. So I said that in my testimony that are talking about creating new jobs uh, and getting the most bang for our bucks. Uh, it's in new jobs out there in the community, in the construction industry, building infrastructure. Uh, so I'm, I'm sorry, we have to cut you off, and in Congress right. we have rules and we, we don't get the 10 minute. Uh, <laughs> extra that you get the chair gave you or the chair has, and we get five. So, of the numbers that you said, you didn't. So, besides transportation, which I'm getting to ask you the next question, you you didn't reference any new jobs. They were all preserving jobs. And I don't have a problem with that. I'm just trying to understand accurately what, what happened. Yeah, we okay. make sure yes. you used it okay. in house. Okay. My next question is of the transportation dollars that you used and of this highway project. Um, what were, did you bring in any, any new minority uh, contractors who were able to take advantage of that job? No. We have a, a local contractor that won the bid, the, the large bid for the, the next two phases of the I-215, uh, and I, several of the subcontractors, I believe, are minority contractors. <laughs> but I haven't tracked the care for quite honestly. Could you Obviously. provide this uh, yeah. panel that information? We will give you that. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Reed, Mayor Reed. The same question to you. How many jobs have you preserved? The total, cumulative total, is 335. Right. And of that, most of them are not new jobs. With the paying contractor, they got the paying contract, is usually people who are already working to keep them working. Because in the construction business, you might have a job not for very long. And so most of them are continuation jobs. Okay, I understand. And of any construction jobs that you have, do you have any records in terms of how my Contractors were able to take advantage of the work. I do not have that information. Could you get that for us? Sure. Okay. My um, second point is if you so appreciate the stimulus dollars, what I would recommend that you consider doing is helping us to let people know more about what happened. We took the heat for the votes, a very tough votes for us, but unfortunately, I'll be very frank with you. I drive up and down the state and I see, you know, Mayor Morris and whoever, this great project that you did, you, know, you got it done.
you will find greater continuance if you do so. My last question, the Government Accountability Office has noted that LA Unified, District, LA Unified School District is facing staff cuts up to 8,000 for the year 2010 and 2011. And in San Bernardino, Mayor Morris, um, the GAO says that you're going to have a $30.7 million budget shortfall that would cut 197 staff positions, including 94 teachers. What, do you, what is your role with education and what do you intend to do? Well, I am not a mayor. I don't have a subset of schools like Mayor Regoso under my, uh, my charge. I am a former school board president. Uh, before I was a judge, before I was a mayor, so I had some experience and deep concerns about these issues, and I'm working to get one of those great grants from Promise Neighborhoods. Took a trip to New York City to try to create a uh, dynamic for uh, Liberty Children's Zone in Harlem. Uh, we, our schools are highly challenged, as you suggest by your uh, comments, in, in terms of performance as well as in terms of financing. Uh, I care deeply about this. Uh, I endorsed a host of publicly charter schools in my community uh, to create small academies that, that do a better job. Um, so I am, as a mayor, I have an educational roundtable that works on these issues. I have no direct authority. Uh, all of our school districts in inland Southern California have sent out, or will send out notices of uh, termination for teachers. It is the saddest, uh, most desperate situation I've seen uh, in my lifetime. Let me suggest the following, and I have to close because my time has expired. As you look at some of the stabilization money, uh, some housing money, different things, uh, categories that your particular city is receiving, that you consider putting together some programs to help teachers, to help various staff members as they go through these difficult times. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen, for your comments. Let me just ask a couple of quick things out there. Just to both of you, you know, there's jobs.
job that it teaches. I know from talking to my school board uh, members that there are teachers who work this year or working now because of stimulus dollars that are going to be laid off next year because of the cuts in education. So there is a, I don't know of any way if the money came directly to the cities that we could give it out to the school districts and boards that we've never experimented with that. Uh, so I don't know how that might work. Mr. Chairman, if you yield, I might be able to shine some light on how it's structured here in California. Sure. Yes. Uh, we send monies to the governor of, the Cal of California, and the governor then appropriates money based on a formula called ADA, Average Daily Attendance, to the over 1,600 school districts. There's a firewall between city governments and school districts. Uh, in the county, or in LA Unified School District, I should say, there are 27 cities. The city government really has no responsibility for those schools. The responsibility is within the school district. We fund them based on that formula. So uh, you might have some of your cities in LA Unified, but uh, it covers about 910 square miles, uh, the district does and we have close to a million children in the district, and so city government uh, has really nothing to do. Now, in the case of Los Angeles, the mayor was able to get the school board, seven members, to vote to give him 10 schools, and the money in this state follows the child, so that money that would come to the district then would follow the child into some special charter school set up or whatever. Right. Uh, yep. Thank you. Let me explain because in our city, 